Why do we do color studies? And why this eerie music? Because of this man right here will haunt your dreams. No need to scream. However, Akiyoshi Kitasoka is a bit of a magician. If you look at this image long enough, it will start looking like it's moving. But it's not. Just using simple color theory, your brain and your eyes start playing tricks on you. Now I know that this has left a few of you confused. What I'd like you to do is stare at one of the corners. Once you do so, it looks like the other corners start to move, but they're not. How does he do this? He's using complementary color and value to trick your brain. This is one of the ways that you can see that color is pretty tricky. I want you to focus on that square in the middle of the picture. A little hard to do, isn't it? And you'd say, Mr. Farrell, it's hard because the edges aren't perfect or it looks like it's moving around. It's not. He's using a trick of color again and value to fool your eyes. <laughs> Here we are. This is Kitty Soka's famous snakes. I remember the first time I encountered Kitty Soka's work, I was boarding an airplane in the Atlanta airport about to go on a four or five hour flight. I had forgotten something to read, so I went into the bookstore. And in the magazine section, there was a Scientific American cover with this on the cover. And yes, I was floored because I thought it was moving. I picked it up, I looked around, I looked at it, and I had realized I had fallen for Kitty Soka's trick. Even if I changed the size of the snakes, they somehow still miraculously work. So when you look at this image, stare at it. I want you to realize nothing is actually moving except your brain. Nothing is moving in this picture either. Again, using just value and color, he's tricking your brain yet again. And nothing is moving in this picture either. It's just a trick of your brain using color and value. <laughs> I can't do it. Just seeing if you guys are gullible and still awake. All right, even though that last image wasn't real, every other one was which makes you go to think how often are our brains getting tricked all the time and when you know it become the basis for one of the most popular movie trilogies of all time the matrix looking at kitty soka's work long enough is bound to make anybody's brain hurt after a while but the reason i started off with him is because he's the perfect reason why we do color studies he demonstrates very clearly colors can be tricky. And I'm not asking you to do something I don't do myself. Every artist I know, every professional I know does color studies. Remember, our sketchbooks are mad scientist laboratories where we're looking to discover the correct answer. So sometimes I get a little frustrated when I have students come up to me and go, Mr. Farrell, what color should I use here? Well, honestly, I can give you the best guess I can through experience and years of exploring color. But unless you truly test it out for yourself, we both honestly don't know how it's going to react in that given situation. That's why we continue the pursuit of color study for the rest of our lives. It's a thing that is always evolving and changing. And then you can say, well, that sounds scary. But to me, it's exciting. There's no reason to ever be bored because colors are always constantly changing. So where do we start with our color studies? We go back to light and value. Remember friends, value is always more important than color because without light, you can't see the color anyway. There's a scientific term called metamerism, which goes into depth with how color is actually affected by light and dark. We will talk about that on a different day, but that's one of the reasons why value studies are so important leading into color. Now, the evidence of what I was just talking about is clearly demonstrated in these two images. The top is a value study. We see just the gray tones. We see everything very well rendered out, and we know exactly how that light's going to come in. It's clean and clear. If you look at the bottom, we see the dominant color used throughout the picture is being affected by the light. Notice that the uh, picture isn't rendered as cleanly. For example, the, the characters look like they don't have a soul. There's no eyes finished in them. That's because with a color study, you don't need to render out everything. We're just testing how the inter colors actually interact with one another. When starting with color, a great place to start is actually the atmosphere. 
And I just know what you're thinking, but, but wait, 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 wait. I, I've got to put a yellow school bus in there. Even that yellow school bus is going to be affected whether it's day or it starts to become night. I know what you're thinking. Farrell, get back inside! Listen, through the power technology, I have the power to take you anywhere. And no, don't worry, I'm following the same protocols all of you are. But we are journeying through this city at night because I want to show you how the colors at night are different than the colors that would be in the day. And this is because the temperature's changed. The light has changed because of the temperature and the amount of light hitting the objects. If I held up a red apple, notice I said red, that red is actually called the local color. It's going to be influenced by the atmosphere because that red will look different during the night than it would the day. Hey, cool down. All this color theory doesn't have to be enraging or confusing. I'm going to try to simplify it for you the best I can. Everything in this picture is warm. The desert's hot. You know her mood is furious. Even the sky feels warm. And in contrast, everything in this picture is using cool colors. Even the person on horseback has their back turned towards us, the viewer. <laughs> That's cold. But Mr. Farrell, I I'm still confused. Which ones do I choose, warm or cool? Who will dominate? <laughs> Calm down. Ask yourself these three simple questions. What is the temperature? What is the mood or emotion? And lastly, what is the time of day or season? All of these things will impact the overall atmosphere color in your picture. So in that decision process of whether or not you should have a dominant warm or cool throughout your entire image, ask those questions. Remember temperature, mood or emotion, or what time of day is it? Now, these color studies are exploring what's the best solution. If you notice this dragon starts off with a simple value drawing in the top left corner, and as we are exploring these warm colors, we're simply adding some cooler solutions in with the dominance of the warm. And these are cool solutions, again, helping us discover what is the best path forward to creating our final image. It's better to make our mistakes here than decide halfway through your final, uh-oh, I screwed up. There's a creepy guy in front of a cemetery gate. And, and, if you look at the one on the left, very bold and vibrant colors. That would be my first instinct, just put those down. Because I'd be thinking, oh, the background's got to be blue, and I'm going to put some compliments in here and help them pop out against that background. And But if you look, it's a little harder to see all the individual elements. I, I start losing clarity because the color's almost too intense everywhere. But when I start to desaturate, put less color down, um, you get better clarity with the image. So oftentimes when I'm experimenting with color is I'll make a really crazy, saturated, very bold image and then I'll start stepping back with a color and knocking it back and go, oh, ah, there, my audience can digest this a little bit better. The image on the left seems to tell me, look, it's a bear and a girl on a glorious magical journey, best friends in the woods. I'd love to see that children's story, whereas the image on the right is more, a bear looks on his back and sees lunch, the journey of a stomach. So testing our colors out with our values can have very different interpretations. That's why we have to figure this out because our audience will see different things based upon what colors we choose. The colors we could choose could influence how we are happy about what we're looking at, or are we sad, or are we conflicted? And this is just by changing the colors because colors are information. That's what they are. The values set the stage where we can see where everything's clearly, but the colors tell us what this may mean. It's like the emphasis. I can use the word happy, or I can use like happy, or I can use happy. I'm just changing the inflection of my voice. That's what colors do, they're inflection. Keep your color studies simple. Look at the one on the left, very simple, very rough, but it helps us get to the image on the right. Again, I would remind you, local color is different than atmosphere color. Notice the environment influences the color.
I know that this was a ton of information, but I want to reward all of those who stuck with me. This is a video created by Rishi Kaneria for Raging Cinemas. And what he did was he took the greatest hits of all of Pixar's films, some of your favorite movies of all time, and he shows how the color spectrum applies to these movies. Now think about it. I talked to you earlier in this film about a dominant color. Here, Rishi is going to show us how Pixar actually does it in some of your favorite films. And it'll start to all make sense for you. How you need to pick that color that means so much for mood, emotion, temperature, time of day, and the season. I'm Farrell, and this has been a Brain River High School art production.